Five YouTubers, one project, no communication. What could go wrong? Well, it turns out that lots of things can go wrong. So I got invited by Dan Pose, a fellow game dev tutorial YouTuber, to participate in a little game jam sort of thing with four other YouTubers where someone would start off with a project and pass it on to the other one without telling them literally anything. This kind of project was coined past the project by some other YouTubers who did the same thing a while back and we thought it'd be a fun time to try it out. And this is actually my first collab with other YouTubers on this channel. So I was honestly pretty excited to participate. And you can totally check out the collab video on Dan's channel. It was really awesome. It has all of our viewpoints from all the YouTubers. And it also shows Dan, who was the first to have the project, playing the end product and reacting to it, which is pretty neat. So in the order of YouTubers, I was last. So I would get this project and I'd have to figure out what I wanted to add to it. So when I opened the project, I was so confused because I had literally no idea what was going on. I thought it looked nice. I was in a supermarket and the lights and the reflections looked pretty neat, but I was suddenly starting to get pummeled with a million cans without any instruction as to what I needed to do. So after a couple minutes of just driving around, figuring out what the heck was going on, I realized that I had to pick up these items and deliver them to the corresponding area, kind of like DoorDash. Oh, maybe I should have called it DoorDash. That was a fail on my part. But basically you had to deliver these items to the area while getting pummeled with cans. I'm not sure why exactly, but YOLO. So I actually recorded this video while I was sick, so I didn't actually record my face. But here's a little bit of my reaction when I started the game. Ooh. Okay, interesting physics. What is going on, S-E? What the heck is going on here? Okay. I don't really know what's going on. Why these things are chasing me? Why they're so against me getting my bananas? So yeah, judging from this, the first thing that came up to my mind was having some sort of instructions so that whoever picked up this game can get a better idea of what they were doing and what was happening. So the easiest way to implement instructions is just to put it on a main menu somewhere. I didn't want to overcomplicate the project as it was. I just wanted to add on to it so it can look more polished and have more feeling to it. So in the new scene, I made this menu where I just added the title of the game, some instructions, the start button, and two of the items that you picked up in the supermarket with some animations, so it just looked a little cooler. For animating these objects, all I did was create a little script and then I moved them over time, either with a specific speed or following a sine wave so it can jump up and down as the title does. Then I thought that the actual scene could use some background music so it wouldn't seem so boring. And browsing through open game art where you can get a bunch of free assets for your game, make sure to check the license. I found a rock one and I thought it fit perfectly because who wouldn't want to hear rock music while in the supermarket getting pummeled by cans? I definitely do because look at how this sounds. So another thing that you can do to add feeling to a game is add a camera shake. So basically when the shopping cart collides with something, then the camera will shake in response to give a more visual feedback to the player that something is happening. And it's also a way of conveying intensity of an event happening. So in our case, we used the Cinemachine camera, which is an easy way to control cameras in Unity, which I have several tutorials on. And it already has a built-in screen shake, which I have another tutorial on. So all you have to do is add in a Cinemachine Collision Impulse Source script. So how that works is that the source is where the shake will be originating from, which in this case, it's the shopping cart. And the collision part is that when anything collides with the shopping cart, then as the source object, it will detect that something has collided with it and it will send out an event to Cinemachine saying, hey, something has collided with us. We have a shake request. And so then on Cinemachine, you have the impulse listener, which listens to requests. And upon listening, we'll tell the actual Cinemachine camera to shake. So this is how it looks like when we add some shaking to our scene. As I was playing the game, I was thinking what a shame that there are no ragdolls. Literally, I was playing the game and I was like, wouldn't it be so cool if there was a ragdoll attached to the shopping cart getting flown around as if the shopping cart were in control and the ragdoll wasn't? Because the shopping cart is going so fast that no normal person would be able to control that. Well, guess what I did? I downloaded a model from online since I don't know how to 3D model and I also don't know how to rig, but 
After a quick Google search, I found out that Mixamo has an auto rigger that's free to use. All you have to do is import your character and then you move these little circles to wherever the appropriate bones are. And once you do that, you wait for one or two minutes and it automatically rigs it for you, which is so nice. Then you import the model into Unity, put it in your scene, and then you create a ragdoll out of it using the ragdoll wizard. Thanks to a quick Google search tutorial by Dapper Dino, it's pretty easy to set up. You just drag in the corresponding bones from Mixamo into the ragdoll wizard and it automatically ragdollifies it for you. I have no idea what that word means. Then if you don't quite like how it looks, you can actually change the colliders on the ragdoll characters and adjust it. But basically I placed the ragdoll in front of the shopping cart and then I moved the arm bones so that it can lay on the shopping cart. Then I was wondering how I could make the ragdoll hands be attached to the shopping cart without having to make them children of the shopping cart. Because I thought like that would have messed up the flow of the ragdoll character. Making the ragdoll a child of the shopping cart doesn't make sense. Luckily, Unity has something called fixed joints, which can be applied to rigid bodies. And rigid bodies are just things that use physics. And basically this will allow you to kind of tether two objects together so that they follow each other without actually being parented, which is actually really neat. So after a bit of configuration here and there, I think it's safe to say that this is definitely the best choice I made in regards to this project. I also thought the lighting was kind of bland and too consistent for my tastes. So I wrote a script to randomize the light color and intensity over time. And I do this using coroutines which curtains in C Sharp are functions that you can basically pause the execution of. So usually in functions, it executes things very quickly, one after the other. But with curtains, you can actually say, hey, wait a minute, can you wait until something has been completed or some time has passed and then continue? So basically I change the color and then I tell Unity, wait a couple seconds to change the color again. And I did that for both the colors and the intensities. And this was the product. Some other small things I added was I added bananas and toilet papers to the walls, similar to posters, just to make it a little more lively. And I also added a spotlight on the character because there were a lot of items on the scene and I just wanted something easy that would kind of point to where the ragdoll was so that the player could easily tell where their character was in the scene. I also added a little timer when the countdown reached less than 10 seconds to kind of alert the player that the time was running out. I also reduced the rotation speed of the shopping cart so that it was a little easier to control. It was still pretty hard to control though, but I think that kind of added to the funness of it, if that's even a word. And I actually totally forgot to mention this, but there are two abilities that you can use in the game. One of them is called Beam Blast, where it kind of blasts the cans away from you if you're stuck in them. And there's also a boost. So for the abilities to get them, you have to go into the specific area and unlock them. The beam blast actually is free to unlock because one of the previous YouTubers forgot to set a price on it. <laughs> but the blast costs $100 to unlock and you can only gain money by delivering items to their areas successfully. But I had so much trouble with this game, even getting an item to the area that I barely used the power-ups personally. But what I was getting at was when you did the beam blast, I also added a little camera shake to that so that it could look cooler. So after all was said and done, I took the project from this to this. And I personally think it turned out pretty good and I had a great time and everyone did an amazing job. So I'm very happy to have been a part of this and I look forward to doing more collaborations in the future with either the same team or other YouTubers. So I actually don't make these kind of videos much on my channel. So let me know if you enjoy these kind of videos and if you'd like to see more of them. I mainly do tutorials on Unity, but I want to expand and explore other kinds of videos and maybe other engines. So if you did like the video, make sure to like and subscribe helps the YouTube algorithm, which in turn helps me. And I also have a Patreon if you're interested in supporting me. I offer source code for my videos, early access, exclusive tutorials, and more. With that, I want to thank all my patrons because they really make these kind of videos possible, and I really appreciate all of their support. With that, I'd like to thank my new patrons. In the supporter tier we have... Thank you so much. 
In the enthusiastic tier, we have Uni, Yugi, Jay, Gabriel, Dennis, Jonathan, Juan, Marvin, John's Kitchen, Heather, Maruccio, Ryan, Fritz, Ava, Brian, Zachary, Regan, Dominique, Storeman, Professor Prawat, Paul Works, Murilo, Jeremias, Jathudom, Pixel Shenanigans, Leslie Ann, Simon Delavine, Adrian, Mehmet, and Ezuzito. Thank you so much for all of your support. It is so very much appreciated. And in the loyal tier, we have Lucius, Ovenot, Lyell, Art and File, and Ethuthi. Thank you so much again for your support. It is really appreciated. If you're interested, the link is in the description. So thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.